If you have even a slightly suspicious email, we have a simple method to test its legitimacy. We'll refer to this as a REPEL method, and each letter in the acronym of REPEL offers a mini test. If an email does not pass one of these tests, proceed with caution. If it does not pass two or more, do not click on any links or download any attachments. This here is an example of an actual phishing email, and we'll put it through the REPEL test. The first R is for requested. Did you request this email? Ask yourself if you requested the email or if it's even relevant. In this instance, this email was not requested and it is not relevant. It should be ignored. In addition, it wants me to input my email and password to cancel a request, then it will take 24 hours for the request to be processed. This just does not seem right. For this reason, this email fails the requested test. E is for email address. Does this email look valid? Outlook.com, gmail.com, live.com are all emails of free accounts that will never be used for any official communication. Keep in mind though that email addresses can be spoofed or forged, and in this instance, it looks like it comes from Outlook.com. Also look at the from name. It says from Office 365. However, this can be spoofed as well. We know that both the email address and the from name were spoofed, but they look real. Because of spoofing, this email is actually passing the email test. Next to look at is personal info. Is the email or link requesting personal information or asking you to log in using a username and password? No respectable company will request personal information through an email or a link in an email. If you were to click through in this instance, you'd be taken to a fake Office 365 login page where hackers would get your username and password if entered. So this email fails the personal info test. The next to look at is the second E for errors. Are there grammatical and spelling errors in the copy? In this email, there are actually several. One is this sentence. If you didn't make the request, use this link by logging into your account. This actually should be logging into your account. Another issue with this email is the fact that I am on Mountain Standard Time and if this were truly from Office 365, it would know that, but this is a European time zone which doesn't apply to me. Another thing to consider is if this message is from a person that you know. Look to see if the email uses your supposed contact's typical writing style. If not, that then be considered an error. So this email is going to fail the error test. The last thing to look at is the links. When hovering over links, they should look legitimate. And they should actually point to the claimed organization's webpage. In this case, it does not. It actually shows a link shortener. When you click the link, does your computer to ask you to, to download some kind of file? And 99% of the time, it's malicious unless you requested it. So this email fails the links test. Overall, this email failed requested. It passed email test failed the personal info test, failed the error test, and failed the links test. Now I hope you can better spot phishing emails so you can prevent any future compromises. Learn more at our blog at www.liveconsulting.com news.